We found a trilobite! Three different kinds. Three! <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Did you know that some of the world's best preserved fossils are right underneath your feet? The bedrock in Cincinnati is a treasure trove for trial by fossils, which have helped geologists understand what the earth was like hundreds of millions of years ago, which is why I'm here at the Cincinnati Museum Center Collections Facility to talk to invertebrate paleontologist Dr. Brenda Hunda and learn more about these ancient creatures. My name is Dr. Brenda Hunda. I'm Curator of Invertebrate Paleontology at the Cincinnati Museum Center. I am interested in evolution. Um, I like looking at evolution in the micro realm, what we call microevolution, which is looking at how organisms change and adapt to their environments as populations through time. And my particular area of interest is going to be on trilobites. Um, I grew up in a very small family in the middle of nowhere. Uh, my father was in the Canadian Air Force and in radar, so I, had to, I grew up in very small, isolated, uh, guarded Air Force bases, and, which meant that I had the run of the place because there was nowhere I could really go to get in trouble. So I spent a lot of time outside. And for me, spending a lot of time in nature and exploring was my favorite thing to do. And while some people are interested in stuff here and maybe stuff up here, I was interested in what was down there. And so as a young girl, I would grab my mother's spoons both wooden and silver, which she would be mad at me because I'd bend them all, and I would dig to see if I could see what was in there. And I just always had a fascination with what was down there. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you. You love you some trilobites, right? I do, absolutely. Tell me what's so great about them. What, what, what are they about? Well, trilobites are extinct. They okay. are an extinct group of arthropods, and when we think about arthropods, you think about things like crabs and lobsters. You think about arthropods every day, don't you? Yeah, like I, every day. I, constantly. I mean, like our world is surrounded with arthropods, right? Uh, What's one of the biggest groups of arthropods that we have on the planet? Insects. You right, right, exactly. Now, trilobites are not directly related to insects. They're arthropods, they belong to the same phylum, but because trilobites are extinct, we don't have anything like them on Earth today. So nothing, nothing like a trilobite exists today. That's right. Trilobites today are most closely related to horseshoe crabs and scorpions. Yes. So when did trilobites live? So if they've been gone, how, how long have they, and how long have they been gone for? So the first trilobites appear on the scene about 520 million years ago, and they died out about 250 million years ago in the world's largest mass extinction event known as the Permo-Triassic extinction event. So, okay, so that, well, there's lots to unpack. So they lived a really long time ago. Yes. And they died out still a long time ago. Yes. And then at the same time, they lived for a long time. How long were they on Earth for? About 270 million years as a wow. class. Wow. Yes. So what can trilobites teach us about the Earth from millions of years ago? Because they were around for so long, they diversified into pretty much every latitude and longitude on Earth. Okay. They lived in almost every environment in the ocean. Of course, we you know trilobites were not terrestrial. They did not fly. Mm -hmm. They were all in the ocean swimming. But <laughs> right. within those ocean realms, they occupied every ecological role that you can think of. Okay. Predators, scavengers, detrital feeders, every kind of lifestyle. Swimming, nectonically, burrowing. Wow. Um, and so they can tell us an awful lot about the different environments in the ocean and even the chemical conditions of the ocean at that time. Can you show me a couple of trilobite fossils? Oh, sure, absolutely. Let's go. Awesome. So we have thousands of trilobites. I'm going to show you some of my favorites. Oh, awesome. Let's see what you got. So this cabinet is full of trilobites. Okay. Along with several others that we have. And uh, this, if, this is just trilobites in here? This is just trilobites. Wow. And if you recall, we have over 20,000 species. Of course, we don't have every single species here. Sure. But we do have a network of museums that we share data worth, with that we can see a lot of trilobite species. And the first one I want to show you is actually one of my favorite specimens we recently got in. Oh, cool. This guy right here. This is Isotelus maximus. Oh. It's actually a so small a one. It yeah. is a little guy. He's a little guy. Now, this is the official state of Ohio fossil. That's the official state of Ohio fossil. Yeah, Isotelus. Okay. You yeah. can like fit it like you'd be, it'd fit in your hand. Yeah, he would fit in your hand. But what's really special about him, other than the fact that he's complete, is that he's the first trilobite we have, actually the first fossil of anything in the Cincinnatian, with soft body preservation. Soft body preservation, so not like bones or shells. Right, actual wow. tissue. And tissue preservation is very rare, and it requires certain conditions to do. And you can see the black yeah. circles here, right? Uh -huh. 
those are soft tissue that's been preserved inside by pyrite replacement. So it was, are they like blood vessels or? I think that they're probably musculature. Okay, and you, yeah, that's you can you can definitely see that. You can see it's uh, patterned, and they're kind of like yeah. cereal. Which, even though the tail of the trilobite is one plate, mm -hmm. it belies the original segmentation of the animal, which is part of its ancestry. Do, are those uh, its uh, eye tissue? Are the eye tissues preserved as well? Yeah. So the lenses here. I don't think the lenses themselves are preserved, but these are where the lenses would be. That's crazy. And that is the eyes of the animal. Yeah. Trilobites are fascinating because they're the first fully sighted organisms in the fossil record. Wow. Yeah. So now this particular species, mm -hmm. if I can, if I can make a hypothesis, yeah. would have been on kind of on the ground because mm -hmm. eyes are on the top. Yes. Wow. So it's like so now looking around like this. Yeah, it would have had two antennae coming out here. Would okay. have had legs squiggling at it at around. every segment. Yeah, um, under oh. the head and under the tail. Yep. Yeah. Kind of like what we think of when we think of a roly-poly, if you yeah. will. Um, and he would have been screwing on the C4, probably eating soft-bodied things in the sediment like worms. Okay. Now, this guy you mentioned was kind of small. Yeah. Right? Well, they don't stay that way. Isotelus, as a genus of trilobite, is the largest trilobites on Earth. Oh, okay. Um, the biggest one comes out of Canada, but here's one of our big ones. Whoa! Yeah, so this is a cast wow. of a specimen that we actually have currently displayed. And this is about 40 centimeters long. Wow, that's big. It's like, I mean, that's the size of like a, like a hubcap. Yeah. Like that's big. That's a big animal. But and <laughs> you've got to think back in this time period, things didn't get to be supersized. Right. Right? And so arthropods, this is big for an arthropod at this yeah. time. Yeah. That's big for arthropod now. It is. It is. I would, I would, I mean, I, if I found, if I was swimming and I saw one of these in the ocean, I would be terrified. So how do you go about finding these fossils? Well, in Cincinnati, we're actually really lucky because they tend to be everywhere. Okay. And um, I'm going to get to show you some places. Oh, very cool. About where the fossils are. Okay. But we work off of the research of previous scientists. So All there's right. hundreds of years of research in the Cincinnati area about the fossils in this region. So uh, lucky for us in the Cincinnati, in any cut in the hill that you see driving around the 275 or the I-75, I-71, the cut in the hill, full of fossils. Well, let's go check it out. Uh, sounds good to me. Awesome. Basically, the limestone around here is made up predominantly of little bits of mud off the bottom of the floor okay. and then shells and exoskeletons of fossil organisms. If you were to cut this and look at it in thin section, it'd be nothing but mud and shells. And shells. Yeah. Well, you can even see the, the little bits of shells here. So what are these little circles here? So those are the columns, the columnals of crinoid stems. Okay, so those are the things that like stuck in the ground. Yeah, like a flower. Like a flower, but they weren't plants. No, no, they were animals. Okay. They're related to starfish. Okay. Okay. This is a big chunk of Isotelus trilobite. So this is a piece of trilobite right here. Yeah. So we found a trilobite. We found a piece of one. <laughs> we found a piece of trilobite. Yeah, yeah, you can see they're usually kind of chocolate brown. Okay. Um, and then this is part of the flexicalamine head of the trilobite, right there, a little piece there. Oh, wow. And these are its free cheeks on the side of the head. And so there's pieces of flexicalamine and cryptolithus and isotelus throughout this entire slab. So there's a whole bunch of different, there's a ton of ancient species ju just yeah. in this one rock. At least three trilobites, crinoids, there's bryozoans. There's, but there's tons of individuals saved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, in, I mean, so this, this ocean, that was above Cincinnati, which is yeah. full of life. Full, full. So this is a really weird ocean. Like it'd be, it would be <laughs> something that we wouldn't even couldn't even imagine without without the science here. Right. And what's interesting in part is that even though we're missing some critical pieces that we're familiar with today, like vertebrates in the ocean, um, many of these guys, all looking different, are representatives of a lot of the material of specimens that we have in modern oceans. Okay. So we don't have trilobites anymore, but we have crabs and lobsters and shrimp. Right. You know, we don't have crinoids anymore. Well, we do actually have crinoids, but they're a small part of the fauna. Mm -hmm. But most people are more familiar with, you know, uh, echinoids, sand allers, yeah. starfish. Right. So there are major representatives of all of these groups. They just look a little bit different. They just look different. Yeah. That's cool. So, Brenda, trilobites were here for hundreds of millions of years. How come they're not here anymore? 
Well, the Permo-Triassic mass extinction event is the largest one of the big five that we have on Earth. It wiped out 96% of all marine species. That's almost everything. That's almost everything. In <laughs> if the you ocean, round up, it's, a, it's, a, it's everything. <laughs> right. And so they're just one of many, 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 many groups that went extinct at that time. Well, thank you so much for bringing me out here. I really appreciate it. I, I love the idea of like I can, we can just come out and find fossils like right under our feet here in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. it's, it's one of our treasures yeah. that tells us about our important natural history. This area is huge, not only in the science, but in the history of science and scientific endeavors. And it also is right beneath our feet, one of our greatest natural resources. And doesn't it just smell great out here? It smells great. It's fresh air. It's fresh air and fossils. Air that you and get fossils. To... <laughs> it couldn't get any better. It couldn't get any better. Well, thank you so much, Thanks, Brenda. Thanks, It really... was a pleasure. Yeah, it was awesome. And thank you to the Cincinnati Museum Center for allowing us to come out here as well. And we will see you next time on Science Around Cincy. <laughs> Million. Oh, sorry, I heard that truck. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait for this one car. They're coming at like just the right. I. Know, it's the worst. Who's research? Oh my god! It was so. Oh, close. so close. Go. <laughs> Let's just get it tomorrow morning. Okay. okay. <laughs>